We now have the start of a very simple game here where we have to try and collect our coin but by avoiding the snakes. And we can see at the moment that kind of nothing happens when we make it to the coin and nothing happens when our snakes or our enemies collide with us. So we don't even have to dodge them or we don't even have to touch the coin because not a whole lot is happening. This is where we now need to program and design a game mechanic for the game that we're making that tells it to do something when we're touching the coin or it tells us to do something when the snakes are touching us. In gaming, this is usually called a collision, when two things collide into each other. And in Make Code Arcade, the word that they use is overlap. And so when two things are next to each other and then they move to start taking up the same position, they're overlapping each other. We need to tell our game then to run some code when two things are overlapping. Or in this instance, when two sprites are overlapping. And when that overlap occurs, that's an event that happens. So we go into sprites. If we scroll all the way down, we're going to see a section called overlaps. And then we're going to see the type of block here that's an event. The one that accepts the other blocks on the inside here. So click, hold and drag, and then we can just place this anywhere we like in our workspace. I'm going to place it just underneath my game update. And we have a look here that the code inside this event runs while the event is happening or while the event is true. And if we read this out, I always recommend reading it out loud to yourself to see if it makes sense. When we read this out, it's going to say on sprite, that is a kind player, overlaps another sprite that is also of the kind player, run this code. So we can change this event to make it the type of overlap that we want. And there's two overlaps that we're talking about in our game. There's when our player sprite overlaps our coin, which is of kind food. And then the other one is when our snakes or our enemy sprites overlap with us. So let's work with the coin first. And that would read, when we read it out loud, that would be on sprite of kind player overlaps other sprite of kind food. So this is going to look for a sprite that is the player kind whenever it's overlapping any sprite that's the food kind it's going to run the code that's in here so what happens when we get our coin let's make it so that we get one coin all of our game information like how much life we have left and what our current score is is in the info category we can change our score by one whenever we overlap a food sprite but we don't currently have a score so if we find out on start when our game starts which is another event we need to not change our score but set our score to zero so that we start the game with zero points and then when we overlap our food sprite, which is our coin, we change our score by one, or we give ourselves one point. So on sprite of kind player overlaps other sprite of kind food, change our score by one. Now that seems simple, but when we go to try that, you might notice something happening with your score. I'll make it full screen so you can see it on my video, but you might see it on your game at home. We're gonna overlap our coin and expect to get one point, but we're on about 127 points at the moment. And we can just stand there and we can get ourselves a high score. We need to figure out what's actually happening here. Why do we have over 400 points when there's only one coin? This event will run the code that's inside every single time this event happens. If I'm always overlapping the coin, then this is always happening. Therefore, 
it's always changing our score by one. We need to come up with a way to make sure that this event stops happening over and over and over again. So when we cover our sprite like this, it's checking to see if this is true. If this game is running at 60 frames per second, which most of your games at home will run, then in just one second, this event has happened 60 times. We need to stop that event from being true. The event is when one sprite is overlapping another sprite. So to stop that event from happening, we can just remove one of the sprites. To do that, anything to do with sprites is under the sprites category. Scroll down, and we're going to see here, destroy my sprite. This is what we're after. Let's make that the first thing we do. This next step can get a little complicated here because when we drag this across, we get an error. We're not dealing with my sprite. And in fact, we're not actually dealing directly with character and we're not dealing directly with coin. We're not dealing directly with snake when it comes to our enemies. There might be more than one coin or there might be more than one snake on the screen at a time and we need to know which one of those we were actually touching. These are represented by the name Sprite and other Sprite. So out of all the possible players, the one that is currently overlapping is going to be called Sprite and not Character. Out of all the possible coins, the one that is called other sprite is the one that's being overlapped and not the one called coin. So if we want to remove the coin when we pick it up, we want to remove the particular food sprite that was being overlapped at the time. That has the name other sprite. So we can left click, hold, and drag other sprite over to where it says my sprite and again your two circles with your yellow line appear let go and now our code says when any player sprite overlaps any food sprite destroy that one particular food sprite that was being overlapped so let's have a look at what happens we've only got one point and the coin isn't there anymore we didn't get up to two, three, four hundred points because as soon as our player and our coin overlapped, we deleted the coin. So they weren't overlapping anymore. Once we deleted the coin, we got one point. Because the coin was deleted, this event isn't happening anymore. So we only got the one point. We use this same event for all of our overlaps with sprites. So when we want to find out what happens when our enemy overlaps with us or when one of the snakes touches us, we need to make another overlap event. So sprites, we'll scroll down until we find our overlaps. We'll drag our event in. We'll just put it straight under. But again, we need to read this out loud to ourselves to make sure that it makes sense to us and that we get the right kind of overlaps. So this one, we wanted our player overlapping our food or our coin. This one we're gonna, is going to be for when our snake overlaps us. So we could go of kind enemy overlaps other sprite of kind player. It also works the other way. You could have player and then enemy, but I like reading the line, the line of code out, out loud and making sure that it makes sense for what I want to achieve. I want to write some code for when the enemy hits me. So mine says on sprite of kind enemy overlaps other sprite of kind player. Well, now what happens? We can lose some life. We can maybe lose one heart. And if we lose all of our hearts, we lose the game. 
We don't have any hearts at the moment, but all of our life, all of our hit points, all of our scores is under info. Scores, and we've got life. We can give our character some hit points when we start our game, just like we can give him a score. Let's set our life to three when our game starts. So on start, when our game starts, set our life to three. And now we've got three hearts here in the top left hand corner. What that lets us do is that when our enemy sprite overlaps our player sprite, we can change our hearts. We can info change life by minus one. It's already there for you because you're taking a hit point away. And you might be able to guess what happens based on what happened with the coin before. I'm going to run into a snake. And in an instant, we lost all three hearts. That's because, again, if this game is running at 60 frames per second, then this overlap can happen up to 60 times in a single second. But we've only got three hearts. So it took a fraction of a second for us to lose the game. So like our coin, we need to make sure that this event stops happening Otherwise, it's going to go on and on and on. So again, we can just do what we did for the coin. We can make sure that we remove the snake from the game if it hits us. And then we remove one heart from our hit points. So we need to remove the snake and that comes under destroy. So sprites, we'll find the destroy block again. Destroy my sprite. And we're going to make that the first thing that we do because it'll stop the event from being true. And let's just use this opportunity to go over what these are called local variables, what these local variables are. So every single enemy in the game, which one of those is overlapping the player? There's two on the screen. There might be two or three on the screen at any given time. The one that is touching the player is called sprite so that one particular snake needs to get destroyed so we're going to drag click hold and drag sprite to where it says my sprite so now once our enemy sprite overlaps our player sprite it's going to find which one of those enemy sprites was it that was overlapping let's destroy that one only and then let's take away one heart from our three hit points. So that's actually already happened while I was explaining. But we'll start the game again for you. We can move around. So we can get our coin and we've got our point. But on our way to the coin, if the snake hits us, we lose a life. We don't lose them all straight away, just the one. And the snake that hit us disappears. And we've got one life left. If a snake hits us, then it's game over.